Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. This is David, your tour guide in Israel, and today we have special guests. Came all the way from New Jersey, Beth. Hi Beth. Hi. And Ben. Hi Ben. Hi. So welcome to Israel, welcome Thank to uh, Hebron Mountains and our tour of Susia. There are two ways to get here. From Jerusalem, you take road 60, or from Be'er Sheva, you can take road 31, and then 316. <laughs> We're gonna explore together. Okay, we have the map, we have the site. Looks like the site, we have it to ourselves. Okay, yeah. you guys wanna add anything? Because this goes all over the world. My, <laughs> my YouTube channel has 1,500 subs. Ancient Susia was founded by a Judean community during the 4th century AD and thrived for about 400 years. The town is located on the edge of the desert and therefore the community needed to overcome many challenges such as lack of water, extreme temperatures and security issues. Our tour will take us through many aspects of life in this town. Accommodation, economy, the water supply, spiritual life and burial customs. Let's go check out the Dwelling cave. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Look, like a house. This is incredible. So, what makes it a dwelling cave, huh? Did they build the walls inside, separated it into rooms? left the ceiling above so it's they have shelter Last of us here, they put little stones and then they would cover it with smooth plaster. And then when they collect the rainwater, it stays in. So these are cisterns. Uh, this area, let's look around, doesn't have a lot of springs or any rivers or any natural water source. The only water source would be rain. And then uh, the ancient inhabitants of Susia would need to collect as much rainwater when it rains. This is how they would do it. The rain would be collected by these um, like tunnels or channels. Here, this one here. And then they, from here they would go through this entry entrance and fill the cistern. And the farmer or the owner would cover it. It's not covered, you get birds falling in and animals falling in and your, your children falling in and the water would evaporate so it has to be covered. Oh, look at that. How many, how many biblical events happened to our ancestors by the well? Yeah, that's how it feels. I'm not sure they had plastic. No. Well, I was thinking when Ben was doing it, how much heavier it would have been probably the... He's next to Hebron, Jewish? Crazy. <laughs> Oil press cave. Everything is in the caves. This is amazing. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, now I got in good light. Okay. All right, Beth. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're crushing the oil, crushing the olives in the olive press. Amazing, this is. I like the wheel door. What do you call this kind of niche? And you need a few people to push it and roll the door. Mosaic forest. 1500 years ago, our ancestors used the same Hebrew when they were dedicating, uh, oh, thanking the donors for their gifts. So uh, it says, Zachur Letov, Kudushat Mordechai, Isi HaKohen, Shasap Sefaze. So in blessed memory of Rabbi Mordechai and Isi the priest for sponsoring this mosaic floor. Yeah, amazing, huh? Ben, can you read the last line? The Banu Shalom uh, Al Yisrael, I mean, yeah. Guys, you came all the way from New Jersey and here you are reading an inscription that was placed here 1500 years ago by ancestors that you could just walk in and read it. Yeah. Like who else can do that? Not many people in the world. Nope. Amazing. And is this like a recreation or was... It's like this is it. It looks like this is it. Maybe restored. It, it's possible that yeah, they... Considering you can see it's sitting on a modern cement plate. So maybe there was all falling apart and they took it out, took it out glued it on a, a, a solid plate and then put it back in. That is possible. This inscription mentions a community member named Yeshua who donated and sponsored this mosaic floor. Look at the floor, look inside, we know it. Temple Manuel and Patterson uh -huh. had um, the foyer of the lobby had a beautiful marble, colorful marble inlaid floor, and that same medallion. Really? <laughs> like, you know, there were three of them, and uh, two big, the big one in the middle, and two still big but smaller ones on either end. There's like an image of Bet Hamikdash, mm -hmm. the two menorot on both sides, animals on the sides, and then in the middle kind of an arc, you can see two doors, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, I think the orientation here is a big deal because even though the building is an east-west orientation with benches, mm -hmm. but the bima forces you to face Yerushalayim, right. face north. So the the marble um, rail mm -hmm. that guarded uh, the bima and uh, the ark itself mm -hmm. I think what they found, the pieces that they found, the original ones, are in the Israel Museum. Oh. And this is, these are copies, these are replicas. Ah. There's the palm tree. Ah. These are towns of the South Hebron region. Okay, what do we think, what do we think, what do we think this is? I think this could be the end of it. The end? Probably are people, are, are people would people here. escape the fields and hide in the synagogue or they would vice versa? In the synagogue they would be attacked and from here they can escape. They can escape out. Maybe escaping out. Yeah. Yeah? Should we try it? You go first. <laughs>
You got it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Caught that lady on the escalator? Yeah. And nothing Yes. Oh, it's pretty big. Uh, I don't think so, they made a fast escape, but they use this as an escape route. Now I know. You see, I need to try it on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but you can stand up here. You can stand up here and relax. <laughs> Feel the burn. What well, that wasn't the entrance, usually the entrance is the one that says. It says, uh, don't escape route. Ow. And. <laughs> Come back the way we came in, maybe. And they're gonna say, oh, sorry, we sent you on this. What do they say? I think it said, um, Ah, so it's from there to here. It's not that far. Let's take a close look at the burial cave. I can see that they carved it in the rock. This kind of a corridor. And the tomb itself is carved in the mountain. I'm going to go in there. But look at the rock that they used to seal the entrance. Let me roll it over. Yeah, I think back then the, a lot of the tombs were family tombs. They had to make it possible and easy to open and close every time there's a new deceased and they would just add them into the cave with the family. Susia was abandoned by its inhabitants during the 8th century. No evidence of a violent attack or fire were found. The ruins were left abandoned for 12 centuries and were excavated recently. What I find fascinating was how well the town was preserved, so it's possible for us to walk the streets and experience life in this ancient Jewish town. And we're going to thank you all for joining us on our tour to Susia. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. It was cool, good to see. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this tour, please give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel and write a comment and let us know where you'd like to go on our next tour of wonderful Israel. Yay! Yay. <laughs>